Rub up your engines! Well, if you've been following the news lately, you'll know that GM had that deal going with Nikola that they started in September of 2020. Turns out that GM invested about $2 billion into the Nikola company for these big electric trucks, only to find out all the fraud that the Nikola company was doing. They pretended they had a truck that worked. They didn't. They actually pushed it down a hill to make it look like it was driving. It turns out that they even used NASA money to hire sex workers, according to the suit that's going on. <laughs> well, so, you know, the next time, if you got a GM vehicle and you take it in to get fixed and you complain about the high cost of the repair, well, they could just say, well, look, look at us. We lost $2 billion on that deal. We got to make it back up. Uh, the funny thing is, they still have a deal going with this company. It's always, you know what they say, you know, throw good money after bad. Well, they threw all their money in, so they're continuing to try to get something out of it. And uh, it doesn't look like anything's going to come out of it. They had the truck, they put it on stage, and it was actually bolted to the ground. It didn't have any operating machinery in it. It did not move by itself. A lot of the parts were still missing. It was all just a gigantic scam. And they even claimed that the Nicole headquarters and their factory they're going to build stuff was all powered by solar energy and turns out it wasn't powered at all by solar energy pictures of it using drones and satellites they could see there were no panels on the roof at all they just flat out loud i guess they figured oh what the heck it's the ceiling of our bill nobody can see that thing <laughs> we'll pretend i mean everybody's got drones these days to take pictures they'll go lying about something you have when anybody can figure it out maybe somebody standing on the ground can't People from above can. <laughs> and Nicola said they had a game-changing battery from this company called Zapgo. But, of course, it didn't exist either. It was just an idea. It didn't actually exist as a battery that's manufactured. <laughs> So, you know, you kind of wonder about the quality control of GM vehicles if you're somebody like me who has to work on them all the time. Well, imagine the quality control of the guys running it. They don't seem to know what they're doing either. They certainly hitch their wagon up to the wrong horse on that one. <laughs> oh, well, there's $2 billion down the drain. <laughs> ACP3500 says, I'm potentially looking to buy a third vehicle as a toy. I've been looking at BMWs and Audis from 2007 to 12. I'm weary because I'm a Tacoma guy. I never had to do anything with my Japanese cars. Okay. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Those are endless money pit cars. You're going to have to find a guy who really knows how to work on them because when they break, they require special equipment and it costs a ton of money in the United States to work on them. Don't even think about something like that. You want a toy, go get a Mustang or something, you know, that you're not going to drive all that much. Or even a Dodge Charger, if you get one, the engine's still okay, you can have fun with. Don't even think about BMW and Audi. They are German, endless money pits in the United States. Don't even think about something like that. Now, occasionally, I'd have a customer, they'll buy a really old Mercedes or BMW, and they'll buy it for a thousand bucks, and what the heck? What do you got to lose? thousand dollars you get into something big goes and you sell it to the junkyard but what you're talking about 2007 and 2012 you're still paying some pretty serious money i had a customer who did he inherited a million bucks from his parents when they died and sold the property split two million with his brother he's got a million and he bought a porsche and a mercedes and they're both endless money pits <laughs> so learn from his mistake don't follow them. Enrique88 says, I got a 2006 350C with 275,000 miles. I'm the original owner. The oil pressure gauge went to zero. So my mechanic put on oil sending unit, but then it came right back again. I've done all kinds of research that it could be a major job, could be 1800 could be $4,000, and there's an oil leak that nobody can find. What should I do? You know, if I were you, I just get rid of it. It's a 350Z with 275,000 miles. They have a limited lifespan to those engines. If you love the car, get another engine or have a real engine rebuild or rebuild it. There's guys out there that know how to rebuild those 350Z engines because guys like drift them and there's some really good guys out there, but the expensive stuff. If you're willing to put four or five grand and you want to keep it and put a really good engine in, go right ahead. But if you don't want to put that kind of money, just get rid of the thing now while it's still running, you get something for it because otherwise you're going to put a ton of money into it. Kids like them, but then when they blow the engine, they go to a junkyard and they try a used engine and see how long that lasts. You know, if you don't want to get involved in that, just get rid of the thing now. 
sooner than later. Don't put a ton of money into it unless you're nuts about the car and then do have it completely rebuilt and done correctly. And you can have a fun toy if you wanted a toy. If not, get rid of the thing. Mongo says, I see a lot of inexpensive used electric cars for sale like Nissan Leafs and Kias and Chevy Bolts. How do you inspect them and their batteries? Are there scan tools for these cars? Well, of course there are. If you're really serious about an electric car, you're going to have to go to a mechanic who works on electric cars. Now, a few years back, a company that makes analysis equipment for electric cars let me borrow their equipment for a month so I could try it out and it's very complex stuff but you would plug it into the car and you would plug it into your laptop you couldn't use a phone it didn't have enough computing power you would plug it into a laptop and within about 45 minutes it would tell you the total health of the battery so you would have to find somebody who did that kind of stuff who would understand how to analyze what's wrong with an electric car. Now, you can get a fantastic deal that way. I've seen people pay one-third the price of an electric car, and it would only have 15,000 miles on it. I mean, used prices for electric cars is very, very low. But if you really don't want to take a chance, you're going to have to find a guy who knows how to work on them and has that equipment. And not that many guys have that equipment. What you would be able to do relatively accurately enough, guys that work on Toyota Priuses, which are hybrids, but they still have a big battery pack. They understand enough that they would be able to check out an electric car too. So you could go to a Prius guy and he could check out your electric battery and stuff with the same equipment that he uses on the Prius. The Priuses have smaller batteries, but there's the same type of battery and the same equipment checks them out. So you could do that. And you would want to do that if you're buying an electric car, because believe you me, there aren't that many guys that know how to work on those things. And if you buy a lemon and you got to get it fixed, you may not be able to find anybody who really knows how to fix the stupid things. Joe Johnson says, does oil degrade over time in an on-driven car? Yes, it does. They tell you to change your engine oil once a year, regardless of how many miles you drive. But that's if you drive at all. <laughs> uh, when you start the car, it builds up water, builds up all kinds of corrosion eventually. But when you're on the highway going 60 miles an hour, it gets so hot it all vaporizes and then it's pure again. If you don't drive a car much, like say 500 miles a year, you still want to change the oil once a year. But if you actually don't drive the car at all, no, you don't have to because nothing's building up in it. It's just sitting there. And think about it. It's oil. It comes from the earth, right? It's sitting in the earth for millions of years before we take it out. So if it went bad, it would smell rancid when we pumped it out of the ground. <laughs> so it depends if you mean not driven at all or slightly driven. If it's slightly driven, change it once a year. McClary 22X says, Scotty, my 01 Mustang's making an odd rattling noise when it idles. What should I look for for the cause? All right. A lot of times it's simple, and it's just your catalytic converter rattling. So get a little hammer when the car's turned off and go under there, hit the catalytic converter, follow the exhaust pipe. When you get to that thing that kind of looks like a muffler before the muffler in the back, that's the catalytic converter. Hit it with a hammer. It rattles. It means it's starting to break down. Now, if it runs okay, you could live with it. But eventually, if it rattles and the pieces break off, then the pieces break off, jam into the exhaust, and it's like sticking a potato in the back that kids used to do in exhaust pipes. And then the car won't run right because it can't breathe out. It'd be like you trying to run with your nose pinched and your mouth stuffed with rags. So check that first. But it could also be lots of things, exhaust pipes rattling. It could be a broken motor mount. It could be an alternator bearing, lots of things. But a lot of times it's a catalytic converter. Check out these cool wheels that the new 2021 Mustang Mach 1 has if you buy the additional handling package. They're 19 inches in diameter and they're cast aluminum, but it's a layered construction. Now let's hope this casting has done better than the mid-engine Corvette's wheels, which were cast instead of forged, and they're all breaking and bending. We'll find out when you get on the road and people start driving those things hard. People get a Mach 1, they're going to drive like maniacs. Let's see if those wheels hold up because they're cast, but they are a layered construction, so maybe they figured out how to make them cast in a layered construction so they won't bend. GM certainly didn't figure it out with their Corvette. The wheels are breaking all over the place and bending. I got a customer with one. He's bent all four of them already, which and he's kind of peed off about it, too. I wouldn't blame him. Now... Because of this cool design, you can see it's got a lot of holes in it. It kind of looks like one of those old train bridges. The front wheels weigh 1.77 pounds less, and the rear wheels weigh 2.21 less. Of course, if the wheels weigh less, you've got better acceleration. There's less mass that they have to spin. It's, you know, for speed. That's what they're basically made for. And for you people who are serious about driving cars, you can get it with a six-speed Tremac manual transmission. It came from the Shelby GT500, and there's also the 10-speed automatic. That's 
kind of problematic with Ford. They've had some problems with those things as they go on. I definitely would go for the six-speed manual. If you add the performance package on, they're not giving these things away. That turns it into a $70,800 car. So let's hope that these cast aluminum wheels hold up a lot better than the Corvettes. Only time will tell. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.